Today I'm in Lepton Woods, near Lepton. Uh, High Burton's up the hill behind me. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this wood. It's a really old wood, but it's not just a place of nature. It's a place where industry has met nature. Let's go and have a look. Now you really get the impression that a lot of Lepton Great Wood is one of those places that's been, you know, almost untouched by my mankind. And it really is lovely. It's a really lovely old wood. There's no doubt that it's old and that it's one of the last areas of extensive woodland that hasn't been removed to make way for mankind. But um, it's not true to say that it hasn't, that it's natural woodland because there are some species of trees in here, um, some trees that have been um, taken out, some that have been um, encouraged to grow that weren't necessarily native to this woodland. Um, that is because this was this wood was part of the the estate of the the, the wealthy Beaumont family based in Whitley, which is just uh, a tiny hamlet north of Lepton. Um, and through some ex um, expert management of uh, of the woodland itself, they actually managed to make this a very very prosperous place for themselves. So. Um, this was a place where they would they would fell certain trees uh, and they would sell the timber um, for it to be converted into charcoal um, and that charcoal was then uh, sent to often to tan at local tanneries but it was also sent to a big um, industrial complex down at Colne Bridge so uh, quite near where Cooper Bridge is now so near Bradley um, And that was actually that charcoal was used um, also in, in in forges down at Combridge, so um, for metalworks. So this wood is a very lovely old wood, and there's no doubt that mankind hasn't ruined it. But it was a place that made a lot of money for the Beaumont family. And in Lepton Great Wood, it wasn't just about selling um, timber from felled trees. But there was other kinds of in industry going on here as well. Now behind me is a mound, and that's clearly something that's not a natural phenomenon. Um, it's really, really big <laughs> mound of earth that's been dug up. Now that is a clear sign that here there was a small coal mine. Um, and in fact, having looked at some Ordnance Survey maps from 1906, um, there were actually there was actually a colliery here um, that was um, that was. Uh, that was functioning for 50 years from the late 19th century. Um, to my left as well, there was actually a day hole and a shaft. Now you can't see too many signs of them existing right now. Uh, much of this is covered by earth and, and leaves nowadays. Um, and obviously it's been kind of shored up so that it's not dangerous for the general public to walk around the wood. But here you can see there's a lot of earth that's been carried up and lifted up out of the ground. And uh, you can see that there's been a large amount of human activity going on here. Uh, now, this is very common um, in West Yorkshire and other parts of Yorkshire as well to see um, these coal mines sprinkled here, there and everywhere in very, very localised places, very small places that you perhaps wouldn't expect to see them. But of course, coal mining um, drove a large part of the Industrial Revolution in the north of England. Now, under here, there were, in fact, uh, this is a fun fact for you, there were, in fact, um, a mile and a half um, of underground passages so that's quite a creepy thought for me standing on this earth right now. Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to give way or anything, um, but it's quite interesting to know that, that that was obviously quite an extensive at the colliery, and that obviously quite a lot there is quite a lot of coal lying below the ground here. So you can can really understand how um, how minerals and um, natural resources were really being extracted from every place possible during the Industrial Revolution. Now, as a reporter, you always you learn new things and another thing is that upon further inspection there are more signs than I initially thought that there's human activity in this area just above where I was filming now this long dip that's been created here is not natural and was in fact the site um, of the day hole uh, after having consulted my um, 1906 OS map so there you can see, this is an area where coal would have been extracted pretty much from the surface very easily. And you can see that it's definitely another sign that there was a lot of industry here. The walling behind me wasn't originally there either. Um, as I said, 
this is very much a wood that was managed by the Beaumont family. And you can see that it's not an entirely natural area of woodland because of the boundaries that have been given to it. Uh, now, some of the dry stone walling that you see here wasn't actually in place until about the 1730s uh, and it wasn't actually finished around the entirety of the wood until the 1840s. Now of course um, repairs have been done on and off since the 1840s. As you can see here as well, space has been made for public footpaths which pass through the wood and are popular with dog walkers at the weekends especially. Um, but these walls actually took such a long time to build because of the cost. Um, the stone that was quarried um, cost a lot of quite a lot of money to actually quarry at the time, um, but it was also had to be transported across Huddersfield from near Crossland Moor, um, which was quite expensive at the time and was quite a large distance. Think about the fact that we don't didn't have the cars that we have now, and even nowadays with fuel prices, that wouldn't be very cheap. Um, so the walls took some time to be built. Um, prior to the walls, there were hedgerows, uh, but it was the Beaumonts who decided to put the walls in place and create a border around Lepton Great Wood. Um, I've been venturing outside the wood itself, on the edges of it, and I found this pond, uh, it's unnamed. Um, it's actually referenced as a reservoir in the 1906 OS map I've been referring to, um, but it's full of wildlife. There's local fishermen come down here quite often. Um, it was actually quite empty a, a few weeks ago due to the low rainfall we've had this year, but it seems to have filled up now. Um, it's full of carp, perch, chub, um, roach, if you're lucky you might even see a heron or a kingfisher, a flash of blue, or maybe even some tadpoles and frogs. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Lepton Wood is a place thriving. It's a place thriving in industrial history, thriving in natural history, and thriving with activity. Uh, this morning I've seen loads of people out walking dogs, loads of families out with kids spotting all kinds of wildlife from squirrels to frogs. And I even see a few kids head down the hill behind me on mountain bikes as well. So uh, there's really a lot going on here. Um, it's a lovely place. It's a somewhat isolated area of Huddersfield, um, away from, from urban areas and away from even the, the buzz of local villages. Um, and it's something that we're really lucky to have in, in the local area. Um, but this is something that could um, the nature of Lepton Great Wood could be changed quite drastically in the future. Um, there have been planning applications um, for, over, for around 850 houses to be built um, across the two villages of Lepton and Fenny Bridge. Um, they would of course be spread across different areas. However, um, around um, over 300 of them uh, would be in the fields um, in shot behind me. Um, of course, that would have a drastic effect on uh, the wood as an isolated area of nature and in fact a group called Green Alert in Lepton um, known as Gale um, have been protesting against the planning applications and have suggested that they should by no means be going ahead. Um, early reports suggest that the houses themselves would be backed straight onto the wood with only 15 metres of gap between the houses and the wood itself and they argue that this would have uh, um, a negative impact on Lepton Great Wood. Um, now, only time will tell um, whether these planning applications will go ahead in the future, um, and there is a growing demand for them, um, especially uh, with Kirklees Council expected to build a certain number of houses um, over a number of years. So, of course, um, Gail is, uh, has protested and has managed to stall uh, some of the planning applications um, um, through object objecting to them this summer. Um, however, they're not out of the woods yet if you'll pardon my pun. Um, so as I say, only time will tell whether uh, Lepton Great Wood will continue to be this uh, idyllic and isolated and hugely natural old medieval wood, or whether it will be an area that has to deal with um, the effects of human inhabitation.